Be blessed in Jesus' name. I've got a pretty cool word from God um, with a really deep meaning behind it. This came as a result of reading the word of God, praying on it, waiting for the Lord to talk to me, and then receiving a rhema word. I love to be respectful of your time, so I'm going to get right into this. I do ask that if you're new here, please subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, all that great stuff. Um, however, I want to say a quick prayer, and then I'm going to get to it. Jesus, you are triumphant over all. You are El Shaddai. You are the way maker. Lord, we lay down our burdens and our cares and we just, we don't invite you here, God. We want to find out where you are and join you. So Lord, I pray that as I'm speaking and as I'm talking, that I'd be constantly listening to you, to your voice, and to whatever is on your heart and your will. So Lord, I love you. I praise you. I give this to you. May my mouth be a weapon in your hands and let's bear fruit, fruit that lasts. In Jesus' name, for all eternity. Amen. So uh, that last part of the prayer is exactly what we're going to jump into because I got a stinking sobering word from God, um, making me honestly rethink a lot of my life and how time is short and it's of the essence and you got to do stuff that, that lasts. <clears throat> so I've got some notes right here on my computer and uh, I'm going to be looking at those a little bit. So just bear with me. Okay, the Lord spoke to me almost a week ago, and like I said, it blew my mind. Uh, have you ever read a verse from the Bible? Like, you've read this verse a million times, you know what it says, but for some reason you read it one day, and it's as if you've never even understood it before. It's as if it's a blank slate, and this scripture just jumps off the page and blows your mind, you're like, whoa. You know, that's sometimes how I feel like God speaks to me when I'm reading the word. So that's exactly what happened to me, and then as I mentioned, I prayed and waited, and the Lord gave me a word about it. But first, let me paint some context. Context is key to understanding. Uh, it's the surrounding story around an event so that you can actually see the full picture of how and why something happens. You know, it's the setting. <clears throat> Many of you know by now that I had a company for five or six years that I started in my mid-20s. I had about 14 employees at one time. Short story is I made a stupid, dumb decision. Uh closed down the company as the market rolled over. And this was a sensible thing for me to do as just a young growing up man in his early 20s. But, um, you know, might I just, might I digress? The, uh, the humbling experience put me kind of back to ground one where I had to admit the fact that I had wandered a bit from God in pursuit of building an empire. Um, and the, the end of the day, like, it was, it was on sand. I wasn't doing work that had a deeper kingdom level spiritual fruit attached to it. This wasn't work that was pioneered by God. So this brought me back into a season of getting back to the basics, building on the foundation of the rock and God's promises compared to doing things in my own strength. And as I mentioned, like we serviced a lot of the world. We sent sunglasses to almost every country on earth. It was, it was an awesome time. Didn't make much from it. Um, it was a startup, and that's kind of why I had to shut it down. But so this around the end of 2021, I was like, I'm going to go back to the basics here. I'm going to take God's word to my circumstances. This particular Bible verse. Now, this is not the verse that God spoke to me about. This is the context, and then we're going to get into the word, the written word, and the rhema word that God spoke to me. But this is kind of what pioneered and started this whole thing. Psalm, 20, uh, Psalm 127 says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers work in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the guards that stand watch are watching it in vain. It is useless for you to work so hard from early in the morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. And some, trans some translations will actually say it this way. It is useless. To work so hard for a living, getting up early, going to bed late, for the Lord provides for those he loves even while they are asleep. <clears throat> the short answer of what that Bible verse is saying is that you want God to be in your work. You want to be doing God's work. So this became my mission at the end of 2021. I was like, God, I don't want to waste my life building something that won't last. If you're not in it, I don't want to be in it either. Because at the end of the day, 
all of our works are going to be tested by fire. So while I'm, you know, thir uh, currently 31 and I can start to feel the weight of the next part of the journey by weight, I just mean like significance of starting to grow old, become the man that I'm called to be. I still feel as though I have some flexibility and youth and vigor and time to wait on the Lord to say, God, I don't want to get to the top and realize that I climbed the wrong ladder. So I'm going to wait on you to reveal to me the kingdom project that you want me to work on, that you want me to build. By the way, I don't have the answer to that yet, even after a year of diligently seeking the Lord. But I did knock on his door and I was like, God, what's going on? And he said to me, think about how close you've gotten to me while pursuing this. So <clears throat> I replaced all of my media time, closed all my accounts, no Disney, no Netflix, um, you know, no entertainment, no video games, nothing. All the spare time that I would have that I would usually just tap into something so I can mentally check out, gone, and it's Bible time. Even in the morning when I wake up, before I chug coffee, look at my phone and get amped up on dopamine or anything like that, you know, spending the first fruits of my day waiting on God, waiting on his presence, waiting on his word, falling asleep in his arms, uh, worshiping, praising him, that type of stuff. So really getting back down to the, the heart of the matter, back to the basics. <clears throat> this is the Bible verse that I know that you know, and I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to share with you what jumped off the page at me and then what the Lord was saying while it was jumping off the page and then what he said to me when I was praying about it the following day. John 15, starting in verse 4. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We're going to come back to that verse. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown out and withers away. These branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. So, when I read that verse, apart from me, you can do nothing. It was literally jumping off the page, and I felt like I had never read it before. The meaning and the message that... Okay, the understanding of it that I feel like I've always had is that, apart from me, you can do nothing. As in... I'm your source of life. I let you breathe. I give you life. I allow you to wake up in the morning. I am your strength. And while all of that is, is absolutely true, <clears throat> we are the branches that get our nutrients from the vine, which is Christ. That is absolutely true. But I felt the Lord impress on me a new understanding of this Bible verse that apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now I'm going to write, I, sorry, I wrote this down and I'm going to read how it came to me. The understanding that I had with this was almost like God was saying this to me. That apart from me, you can do nothing. Phil, anything that you do in this life that is not for me in my kingdom, it will be worthless. It will have no reward. It will be forgotten for all eternity. Apart from me, you can do nothing. As in, you can bear nothing of value. Nothing good can come out of you. No fruit will come from you and your actions if I am not in them. The only things that matter while you live and breathe in this life is what you do for me and my kingdom. Everything else is worthless and forgotten. At the end of the day, it's all about the fruit that we bear for Jesus. Again, this was the overwhelming lesson, the impression that was just like <sighs> smacked me across my head when I was reading this. <clears throat> and I feel like I had understood the Bible verse for the very first time, or as if I had always looked at a painting from one direction and God was like, let me pick you up, move you over here, and I'm going to show you this Bible verse from a brand new viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, like he is our source of nutrients. I have no doubt that the default understanding that I carried about this for the long time, longest time is, is true. Apart from him, I can do nothing. I can't live. I can't breathe. I can't wake up in the morning without him. But, but what he was really, when you look at the context of this verse, then I'm going to get into the raiment here in a second. The context is about doing, bearing fruit that lasts. So everything that you do in this life, apart from him, is useless. Now, um, 
This is the rhema word that came about a day or two later. I was praying, waiting. This was just churning and building in the spirit. And this is the word that I got. Apart from him, I can do anything I want, but it will perish. So that's the word of knowledge that came. And then there's one more thing here. Apart from him, I can do anything I want, but it will perish. Whew. Yeah. Um, you have free will. You have free will. But if you're a bondservant to Christ, apparently, you know, you really don't. It's no longer I live, it's Christ who lives within me. You are blood bought, paid for. You are a bondservant, a soldier ever listening for his command, a servant continually looking for what needs doing in your master's house. <clears throat> so, you can do many things without Christ because he has given us free will. But whatever you do that isn't for Christ, it's going to be worthless. I think about my life, you know, 31 years old, and I would say that there's about nine years in there of solid meat, me pursuing the Lord. That's a lot of wasted time. It's a lot of wasted time. So if you have found this beneficial, please like and subscribe, all that great stuff. I'm going to pray us out. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I release the favor of God over everyone. Lord, I pray that they would turn their hearts to you, that whatever baggage they are carrying, they would lay it down at your feet. God, your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. So I pray that we would experience the lightness of life that comes from knowing you. The heaviness that's been weighing us down, God, we, just, we give it to you and we acknowledge our shortcomings. God, we suck. We sometimes like a dog that returns to vomit. We, we return to our follies. And so God, we just ask that you would extend a helping hand. We want to surrender to your will and your plan in our life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I've got another video coming out soon. Um, something that God's been telling me about, basically a verse that I just mentioned in the prayer. So keep an eye out for that one. Have a wonderful weekend, weekday, whenever you get around to watching this. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.